Okay. I didn't want it to be too long of a video, so I'll give it to you in portions. Alrighty then. Well, I started changing the oil, but I didn't want to bore you with all of them. Sliding up under the car, jacking it up. What the other so, Jack the car up, secured it. Use my tool to take the bolt out, drain the fluid, put it in the bucket, lubricate the screw after I cleaned it off, of course, lubricate it with a little bit of the old oil. Put it back in and it was a bit of a mess not much of a mess but a bit of a mess this is the rag i used to clean up my mess so as you can see it's quite oily and dirty so now the only thing left to do ooh, Walmart. now the only thing left to do is to uh install the oil filter but before we can do that we gotta get the old one out alrighty then I got my wrench Ooh, my adapter and I got my other adapter <laughs> this is the one that actually goes over the uh the fitting for the for the oil so I can change that out I hate being next to a train a live train track but we'll wait a little bit see if that dies down so you can hear me while I do this down down now hmm. I think it just went down. Alrighty then. I feel like doing one of those uh, National Geographic documentaries where the guys sitting in a in a brush whispering about how the the lion cub plays with its mother and an approaching enemy comes and. Lion calls out for a cry to the other lions. Well, anyway, I just like National Geographic. So, twist a little to the right. And, ah, bingo. Okay. That is O ring. The O ring goes around the actual lid. We're gonna examine that further in a minute. But let's uh crap. This isn't coming off as easily as I thought it would be. But that's okay. 
because I got a tool for that. Alrighty. I'm sorry, can you guys still see? Let's just go ahead and put that down in there, shall we? And then we're gonna put that. Well. Now they did mark it so that they can uh, torque it down to the right specs. So I try not to rub off the markings. Reset the uh, the oil meter. I call it an oil meter. It's digital, but it's basically like a countdown to let you know the uh, percentage of viscosity. I get. I'm assuming level the, of your oil, so it counts down from 100 down to zero. And I decided to change it at. Six percent. Not bad, not bad. So now that that's all done, we'll clean up and we'll get to the light. There's a story behind that. So let me clean up and we'll get started. So the light. I guess I could explain that while I'm cleaning this mess up. Um, I had a shortage in my headlight. And it kept, uh, it would go out some days. And I had to beat on the side of the fender to get it to come back on. And other days it, it'd be off. And I couldn't get to it, and then I hit a bump, and all of a sudden it'd come back up. Just off and on, off and on. It's really annoying. So, one day, it, uh, I was going somewhere. I came out late in the evening to start the car up. Oh, excuse me. And... This thing would not come on. So. I'm banging on it. Banging on it. And it still won't come on. Fortunately. Unfortunately. I had a. Uh, I have a hole in the. The fender cover. In the wheel well. 
so I made the hole bigger to squeeze my hand up in there and tug on the wires. That seemed to work. Since then, if I'm if I beat on the side of the fender and it doesn't come on, I have to stick my hand up in that hole to wiggle the wires to get it to come on. The problem is, I spliced the wires about a month ago. I spliced it. I put a, a fitting on each side, each wire going to the light bulb. And it worked for a while. Granted, it was still cold, so I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking the weather has something to do with it. Now that it's warmed up, it still does it. Not as much, but it still does it. And it's irritating. So, today what I want to do with the light is I want to... Um, Take it apart again and see exactly what I can do to keep that light from going out like that. Because what I did notice is that the light, when I pull on that wire, I'm pulling backwards towards the back of the... Uh, the headlight bulb. So I'm thinking if I can somehow get that bulb to the bend outward inside the frame, which I know is might be it might break or put more stress on it and but I gotta do something. You know. I could buy a new assembly, but that's going to cost. And right now, I really don't have the money to devote to unnecessary car parts. I wouldn't say it's unnecessary, but as long as it's still working, you know. And that's another thing. In this tough economic time, there are still companies out there that are demanding that you pay them no matter what. Oh, well... You still have to pay us. We can we can push your late fees. Push them to the side. You you can pay your late fees later. Don't worry about the late fees. You can pay that later. No, that's not what we're saying. What we're saying is we don't have the money. We can't pay you this month. We can't pay you next month. And even if we could, we definitely don't have the money to pay late fees. So all you ignorant companies companies out there that think, you know, just because the president gave us a stimulus check, that that's going to solve all the problems, you're not the only bill. Know this. There's a phone bill. There's the utility bills. There's a car note. There's the insurance. So get a grip. If you're one of those companies out there and you know who you are because I deal with some of you, that one check... One check. It's not going to cut it. And then there's those that feel like, well, you know, you can always apply for unemployment. Do a search. Do some research. Find out how many people are laid off. How many people are on furlough. And you tell me. how, What ticket number do I stand in line with? To get unemployment out of I'm just going to pop up a number 30,000 and I'm pretty sure it's more than that it's way more than that and you really think that the that the United States government has enough money to just give everybody unemployment if that was the case then there wouldn't be no stimulus check you just tell everybody to sign up for unemployment and we'll take care of you. It's that simple. But that's not the case. They don't, the government already knows that there's a shortage. The government already knows that this. 
the stimulus check is is just to to try to get you by for a month. However, aside from the bills, you still got other stuff that you need to take care of. If you have kids, you got to make sure they entertain. You got to keep the internet on. You got to keep electricity on, like I said before. You got to buy food, toilet paper, <laughs> sanitizer, soap, extra cleaning products. And see, that's another thing. We don't know where people were in their life, in their shopping uh, regiment when this thing broke out. Some people might have already done their shopping, so they're good. But for those who hadn't done their shopping yet, for those who have a system in place for when they go shopping and they don't have any money until then, you know, it's, it's just rough, man. It's rough. <sighs> so to you... Average day working Joes and Joannes. I don't want to leave anybody out. This is why I do these things. And I know I got a little off the topic, but just bear with me. Anyway, the discussion is about the headlight. But first, let's finish this off. I said earlier that I was going to go over this uh, filter real quick. <sighs> now that that's all done, where did I put that other filter? Make sure I wipe down my table. Mm. There's still some white specks. Hmm. Yeah, still some white specks. Or maybe it's just a shine. No, it's, it's a shine, but it's still some white specks. Ah. So what I can tell off the bat is that the little metal piece right here, I'm no scientist, but using common sense, it would seem to me that the oil is flowing better in this one than it is in this one because of the bar. This little metal bar keeps the fil filter from collapsing. Whereas in this one, it looks like it's collapsing in on itself. Like right in there. It's kind of bent, leaning on the next pleat. These, not so much. I mean, they're leaning, but they're not leaning as much as... The other one. Whereas this one. You got these gaps. Especially on that one side. You got those gaps where. It look like it's about to just. Cave in. So. I would say 
And this one was the better filter. Now, like I said, I did put a frame filter in there, so we shall see just how sturdy that one is. This is made in USA. Uh, TL. I don't know what that is. Let's see. I don't know what filter this might have been. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think the other one had any markings on it either. Oh, okay. Sure it did. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. This production. Uh, it's not showing the name of the filters at all. In fact, the number on here let's see. Hmm. You know, I'm gonna have to get back to you on that one if I can. I would like to know what filter they put put in here, because that it seemed to be a pretty decent filter. Now this was the uh This was a super tech filter. I'm looking at the box now. This is that's the part number for it. And this one TL. Fifteen for thirty-six. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I mean, it's not my biggest biggest concern, but I would just want to know out of curiosity if anybody else knows. You know, leave a little something something in the comments. All right, enough of this oil stuff. The light. I got these half rubber gloves from Walmart. I forgot how much I paid for them, but instead of throwing the gloves away, I just... Wash these down and reuse them. Now, uh, uh, crap, my finger is caught in there. <sighs> now, for other forms of dirt, I have a different pair mechanics gloves. Pick those up at any auto parts store. Alrighty then. Oh man. So I'm gonna need my wrench, another extension, and a ten millimeter socket. Let me begin. Okay, so I got the uh the boat loose up under the wheel well. Now I got to do the rest of it. So I got to open up the hood, take all the plastic fender bolts loose to get the fender off. Now, most people would probably just take the whole fender out. I don't feel like doing that just to do one side. So what I'm going to do is 
I'm going to take half the bolts out to peel back the, the fender just wide enough to give me some wiggle room. And then I'm going to take the light lens out and go from there. Okay. As you can see, that gap has gotten further because I was able to take the fender bolts apart. So, now I have to get the screws out. There's two screws. One which you can see right there. In the, right, right about there in the distance. That screw right there. And then there's one on the other side. So once I get those out, I can take the headlight assembly out and deal with that. Okay, so I got it out. So before what I did was I used twist ties and it worked for a while but now it's getting a little soft. I don't think the twist ties are getting soft. I think the, the material, the little foam cushion around the assembly socket, that's getting soft. And so what's happening is the twist ties were supposed to fill in the gap I use the twist the twist the, the lift excuse me I use the zip ties as a spacer because that bottom piece right there where it connects to the socket is too close to the assembly so my choices are either use more twist more zip ties or figure out a way to splice the wire so the wire is shorter but at the same time I gotta make sure that wire pulls back enough where the light will stay on constantly on demand and that seems to be the problem because the zip ties were supposed to do that just that very thing and like I said it worked for a while the rest of the lights the the marker light the turn signal the bright lights they all work so the circuit itself is working the fuse is working it the, the bulb itself is working for the headlight for the the dim lights it's just the fact that for some reason when I put it into that socket Sometimes it comes on, sometimes it goes out. So I'm going to fiddle with this for a little bit, see if I can't come up with a solution to my problem. So what was happening was the wire job that I did, repair, <laughs> was working to a fault. Uh, it was still leaning in the direction towards the the uh the socket which was for some reason pulling on the on the wire so it caused the wire to short <laughs> i can only say that that may be because it's just old you know a lot of times things get old and they don't work as well as they used to. Humans get old. And we don't move around like we used to. So. To keep this old piece alive. Because like I said. The marker lights. The bright light. Still works. Works fine. I'm assuming that piece in the middle I'm looking at might be something for the sensor, the light sensor. 
I think I'm going to clean this off before I put it back in. I still want to go and uh, take the car to get get a car wash. It, it really does need it, but I wanted to get this done first. Um, so, the other thing I did to this was I put a zip tie on it. I put like two. But in the process of putting the, the bulb back in, it shifted. And that threw everything off. <laughs> the the splice, the measuring, the splicing, the, the putting it back together, it, it it's like it didn't even matter. So I have to do something to keep that zip tie from shifting when I put it back in. So right now, I've, I've used another zip tie at a different angle coming from the right side instead of the left side. I don't know if that's going to work, but we're going to find out. So, with that, my friends, I will bid you adieu. I will try to finish this up so I can go wash this bad boy down. And I'll talk to you later. Be safe.